Okay, good morning, Cadre. Um, we're back in the car again today. It's Friday, July 20th. And I'm going to stick to my word and do another video where I provide you an update on the Timeless versus the Aristocrat. Today, the Timeless was on deck. Sorry, I do have the AC running in the background. I don't know if you guys can hear the fan or not. Um, but it's 85 degrees right now. So I am itching to get to the mountains this evening. And by the way, it is only 527. So it's hot. Um, that's just the way it is here. I mean, technically Utah is a high desert and what that basically means is, is that due to our elevation, we're gonna get both extremes. We're gonna get the extreme winters and we're gonna get the extreme summers, so. And I complain about them. <laughs> so, I, I went back and watched the video yesterday. I'm sorry about the lighting. There's not much I can do about that. I'm not going to turn on a bit massive bright light in my car while I'm driving. Um, driving and getting me myself to work is the most important thing. So, um, but yeah, so anyways, back to the weather. I'm all about spring and fall, and our spring and falls are usually wonderful. Um, when they go long, I'm a happy man. Um, our spring was a little short-lived this year. We hit hundreds in the beginning of June, which is not normal for us. <clears throat> a normal summer, it's usually this time of year, which I believe is usually monsoon season further south. Um, but then it's this time of year where because the monsoons are setting in in the south and tend to cool things down a tiny bit, not much, just a little bit, that weather pattern shift is usually when we start hitting the hundreds. Um, we hit them much earlier this year. So, um, anyways, let's get into the shave a little bit as I'm getting ready to leave my neighborhood here and get out onto the main road. So, I live up on a mount, on a, not on the mountain, but I live on what's called the bench to the Ochre Mountains. So, basically, into work, it's practically all downhill. On the way home, it's practically all uphill. It's just the nature of the beast with where I live. Um, so anyways, the timeless, again, just to kind of recap, um, in case you're coming here and watching this particular video for the first time, I own a Timeless. I was asked to use somebody's Gillette Aristocrat number 16 from the forum at the Shaving Cadre and asked to compare both of them and try and determine does he really need to buy a Timeless? Is he missing out, so to speak? So. The Timeless that I have is .68 gap, all stainless steel, polished. I did the pineapple handle, so you get to pick your handle. They all come in different lengths. At the time, I picked one of the longer handles. I prefer longer handles to the shorter ones. Um, I have larger hands. I'm six foot three. Um, a lot of people don't necessarily realize that. Um, but I am six foot three, and as of right now, I weigh 235 pounds. Um, so I'm a big guy. Um, so I prefer the longer handles. I have. I don't. I don't think I necessarily have larger than normal hands. Um, but I, you know, I, I have bigger hands, and I pre so I tend to believe that that's why I prefer a, a bigger razor, a longer razor. So I have the .68 gap the scalloped head and the scalloped base plate. Now, usually when buying a Timeless, you piece it out and you get to pick everything that you want. Um, I somewhat kind of did that because I wanted the scalloped pieces at the time. The, one of the kits that they had that you could pick out didn't have the scalloped. I think they've since done that because it's a very popular look and it does look very nice. Um, that I agree with. It's a beautiful looking razor and the look is just fantastic. So I, that's the, what I purchased. I also added in the base plate. 
there is no doubt about it. The customer service is very good. They're in contact usually with you right away after you purchase it. Kind of, it's, I'm sure it's a generic email, but it basically lets you know that, hey, we already have this machine, these pieces, we will put them together and we will get this shipped out to you as soon as we possibly can. And then you get your beautiful razor in the mail a few days later. Um, it's a seamless process. We're all used to ordering online, so I think we all kind of, if we're in this hobby, you understand the way that all works. Um, so the razor's great. One thing that I've noticed is, is that, you know, I've, I've purchased some newer razors before where you can tell they weren't necessarily machined with the best quality. And I've had some vintage razors the same way, where you kind of have to hold the blade very carefully, make sure it's aligned properly, and it's going to fit exactly right into the razor. Um, I noticed that with my Piccolo. I don't know if others notice that, that use that razor, but there are a couple others where that happens. The Q-Shave is one of them. Uh, those, those future clones, right? So, I don't have that problem with this razor. In fact, with the way that they have their bar that you set um, the razor on, when you're piecing your razor together, I, there's no wiggle room at all, even before you attach the, the base plate to the cap. Um, and to the credit of the aristocrat, because I don't think I discussed this, it's just as good. I mean, when you tighten it down and the, the doors hinge down and close on top of the blade and keep everything locked in, it holds it in perfectly. There's no wiggle room. There's no give. The blade doesn't seem to favor one side. You're getting the same consistency fill on each side of the face when you are using the razor. Same thing with the Timeless, same thing with the Aristocrat. So they're, they're pretty much equal in that regard. But I think it's important to talk about because nothing would upset me more if I paid $250 on a machined razor and then I'm going to have to pay extra careful close attention to make sure that the blade is properly aligned in the razor. Um, I have to do that with the Piccolo. I have to do that with the Q-Shave. It's a pain in the butt, but... I barely broke $20 on each of those razors, if that, you know, the Q-shape was less than 10 with shipping, so, yeah, I'm not, not overly concerned there. Um, what I like is, is that some razors that you buy out there that are higher priced, that come in stainless steel, the head is still that Zemeck material, or whatever, however people pronounce and call that. Not necessarily a problem. I have a few of them. They're still going to last quite a while. Um, but in my opinion, if I'm paying more than honestly 50 bucks on a razor, I want the whole thing to pretty much be the same material. And I understand that to enter some materials, you got to pay a premium. And to enter some craftsmanship, you also need to pay a premium. And that's what I did with my Timeless. And I'm not afraid to admit that. Um, Timeless is a, is a beautiful razor. So the shave today, I used the last of the tour of my Utah soaps. So that corner is now empty. Perfect timing really with me going out of town this weekend. Um, but I used the Bluebell Lime Wood. A wonderful lime scent that's paired with um, cedar wood if I remember correctly. And that's based off of what my nose is also getting. Um, it's a great scent. The lime is nice and strong. The woody notes really help round out the tartness that you can sometimes get with these citrus soaps. It's really good. And what I like about it is, is that it's lime soap that you feel comfortable using year-round. Whereas like margaritas in the Arctic, I'm not ready for that type of chill in the winter, especially our winters. So that's what I use, the Bluebell soap. I use the same razor rock brush. I pulled out that Astra blade that I put the T on to signify it was for the Timeless. It was its second shave. I closed up the shave with the Panade Lime Sec, and then I gave myself a couple spritz of the uh, Lime Coriander Cologne from Seal Bigelow. So I'm in a lime heaven today. And I got away, I walked away with a wonderful BBS shave. 
What's great is, is that usually shapes two through four on an Astro Blade are when that is the perfect blade out there. And this was no exception. The shave was effortless. The shave was super smooth. And the best thing about this razor, I think, with the longer handle and the fact that they machine all of their handles knowing that their the head weights are pretty much all in the same realm, that it is perfectly balanced. And I think that as wet shavers, because we think to ourselves, oh, I'm just holding the razor straight up and down, I'm going up and down this way, or just side to side, I'm holding the razor in my hand, does it really need to be balanced? To be honest with you, I don't know, but I will tell you this, when you're holding a razor that is perfectly balanced and perfectly machined in that way, you feel a difference in your hand. You're not necessarily feeling a difference in the actual shave, at least I don't think you are, but you can tell that some better craftsmanship went into delivering this razor for you, and it just feels good. It feels good. I mean, you're able to comfortably hold the razor in your hand. You, you know, I, I showed that hold that I kind of do with it, and just give myself an effortless shave. I'm able to find the right angle, which by the way, with the way that these safety bars are made on the Timeless, I would almost argue it's impossible to not shave with the right angle with this razor. And I think that's why you see so many people claim the Timeless gave me the best shave I've ever gotten. Because, especially if you're a newer person, that's one of the things that I struggled with the most was finding the right angle, right? There's so much give and take when you are maneuvering that razor. I don't think it's possible to shave with the wrong angle with the Timeless. I really don't. I've never nicked myself. I've owned it for over a year now. I just don't think it's possible uh, to nick yourself. So, you know, keep that in mind. But back to the balancing, it's also nice because when you place it up against your face and when the razor feels perfectly balanced, I think your hand is less inclined to push in and add pressure, which we all know when you are wet shaving, or traditional wet shaving, however we want to call this, shaving with a safety razor, shaving with a straight razor, um, you don't want pressure, right? You don't want to add pressure. So, you the, you really are able to just let the razor be the razor, and, and that's cool. You know, that's, that's really cool. As I'm sitting here and I'm comparing the two, um, I think I'm willing to say, at this point, shave-wise, I think the Timeless is easier to shave with. But I'm going to quickly throw in a huge asterisk here and throw this claim out there. I would classify the Aristocrat as a mild to medium razor. I would classify my Timeless with the .68 gap as a mild to medium. They're not leaning towards that aggressive side. However, the point still stands. So, that's kind of where I'm at, guys, with the Timeless so far. I hope you guys um, are appreciating these reviews that I'm doing. Um, so, as I mentioned, I'm going out of town, so I'm leaving early from work this afternoon, which was unfortunate due to uh, the possibility of meeting up with a friend today wasn't able to do that um, because of work and those things. But anyways, so I'm going to uh, leave. I'll be coming home Monday afternoon. So Tuesday, I'm not bringing shave gear on this trip. It's another short one. I will, I promise you a camping shave the following week because I'll be gone for a whole week. I promise you a camping shave. I will record it. I doubt I'll be able to upload it because I know where we're camping and internet connection is spotty. So, but anyways, um, what I'm going to do is when I get home on that Tuesday, just to kind of recap, I will do a traditional shave, most likely with my straight to remove the beard growth, probably my feather, SS. So that's Tuesday. Wednesday will be the last shave of the Gillette Aristocrat by itself. And then Thursday for this review will be the last one with the Timeless. And then Friday will be a 
shave where I divide the face in half, do this half time, timeless, this half Gillette aristocrat, and then I'm going to make my final judgment call. So that's the plan, that's what's going to happen, um, so expect to sh basically shave videos next week, Tuesday through Thursday, um, and that'll be that. And then uh, two last things I'm going to talk about before I get into work. Um, one is just kind of this channel. You probably won't see me doing a lot of recordings in the car um, because I'm going to be honest with you yesterday. I kind of missed it and today I'm probably going to as well. But when I'm driving into work this early, one of the things that I like to do because I'm driving in to get to a meeting that starts right at 6 a.m. So I don't have time in my office to myself that's quiet. But every morning, what I usually do on the commute into work is, is that I will listen to a Catholic radio. And they are usually at this early in the morning going through the daily readings. And it just is something that I like to start my day with. And I miss out on that here and I have to catch it on the podcast um, after my meeting at 8 o'clock before the next meeting starts at 8.30. So I probably am not going to do a lot of this for those reasons. Um, you guys will primarily see me in my bathroom when I'm shaving. So as I get ready to check into work and find a parking spot here, the next thing I wanted to, to let you guys know is, is that, so yesterday when we were packing, it was like we were getting hungry and my wife's all like, it's getting, you know, kids are hungry. I really don't want to dirty a bunch of dishes when we're getting ready to go out of town and I'm like yeah it makes sense why I don't really want to have to sit here and clean a bunch of dishes either I'm hot from getting the trailer loaded so we figured let's go out to eat and as you guys know that I've raised young kids going out to eat with a four-year-old and a one-year-old it's never fun um, we try to avoid it as much as we possibly can for multiple reasons one to save money because eating out is expensive two for healthy reasons and uh, three having kids in a restaurant is just never fun but we braved it and what we did is I um, that there is this we've been getting these ads <clears throat> in our mailbox and the paper and stuff of these new pizza joints that are popping up in Utah that are all you can eat and they tout pretty good prices and they are and I'm a pizza guy I love pizza and, and I know pizza from uh, <laughs> one of these places is probably not going to be the best. And it, it wasn't the best, but it was good. So anyways, we're walking through the pizza place and we're getting ready. We're getting our pizza and my son says, hey, um, he, he's looking at all the pizzas and I, he, he wants to start with a dessert pizza. And I'm like, whatever, it's an all you can eat. I got a piece of pepperoni on there. He's got a cheese stick. He's got a little salad, broccoli. I'm like, we'll throw the dessert pizza on there now. And he's less time having to deal with him up at the line. So he gets back to his seat. And of course, you know, like any little kid, what does he start with dessert? And he takes a bite of the, uh, of the Oreo pizza. And he goes, basically, this is how it went. Oh my gosh, dad, what's this? And I'm like, it's called Oreo pizza. He goes, you can put Oreos on pizza? I'm like, yeah, for dessert. And he goes, why haven't we been doing this all our lives? I busted up laughing. You know, just, just the little things kids say. He's four, year old, four years old and he's already asking why we've been doing this all our lives. So, anyways, the video's getting long again. I commuted into work. I apologize. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm going to head into the office. I've got 15 minutes before my meeting starts and I want to get through my email and work on the process of getting this uploaded as quickly as possible. Um, so if you haven't joined us, please hit us up at www.theshavingcadre.com. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend, and I won't be on the forum as much over the weekend, but I will be back and getting caught up Monday evening into Tuesday. So have a good day, Cadre.